Welcome back, everybody, to the beautiful world of Icarus. Today, as always, we have a few chores on our list. I'm very happy with our new base all set up here. Definitely pleased that we have a nice pair of moas to ride around on as well. But I think for today, our main goal is, of course, to start leveling up. So we're at level 18, and we want to make it to level 20, hopefully, by the end of this episode. And to start things off on that journey, I think what we do is maybe check out our operations. So this mission here was the one that I mentioned in the very first episode. Completing this mission um, on open world or even in just a normal mission gives you access to a free solar panel and multiple solar panels if you utilize the item recall. So in your pause menu, there'll be a option to request a resupply for mission items. So you can get two free solar panels from this mission as well as a bunch of experience points. So I think we'll first take care of this wolf here. And then jump into our mission. Let's grab all of this. And let's start this mission up here. This is Major. UDA's given Lagos the go-ahead to expand operations. They're looking for data on the deserts. If you can get in there, it'll open the place up for scanning, prospecting, and a whole lot else. There's a lot of questions here, and they're paying top dollar for answers. Choice All right. is yours. So the mission is basically drill a hole through two walls there'll be a cave i think it's in this area um, or maybe it's this area but there's a cave for you to set up a drill and then power that drill with the solar panel that you receive so let's go ahead and pick up our mission items all right we've arrived so the first item of course is the tunneling drill Lagos unit figures the cave system's the key to getting through to the desert. But tidal forces from Minos mean subterranean networks are anything but stable. They figured you'll need drilling equipment. All right, and then the optional objective is get the power system, which is really the main reason that we chose to do this mission in the first place. So I'm gonna head over there grab that solar panel. Now, unfortunately, you know, we're not really at a level where we can make use of power quite yet. But I definitely want to get the experience from completing this mission, and if we ever decide to return to our hard mode Olympus map here, we'll be set up for a nice power system as well. So they recently added batteries into this game as well. And batteries have essentially made solar panels one of the best power options. It used to be that the solar panels weren't really that great because they would only work during the daytime, of course, when there's sunlight to power them. So if you're playing early in the morning when the sun isn't quite yet fully risen, or if you're playing at night, all of your power will be off with solar panels. But thanks to the battery update, you can now use solar panels pretty much any time. Um, just store the reserve power that you're not making use of into those batteries, and you'll have power whenever you need it. So I'm going to keep heading over to the drop pod over here. I'll get back to you guys once we grab it. All right. We've arrived at our drop pod here. This is the electricity tool and the solar panel. Very, very nice. And then the cave is actually up here. 
Um, but before I go to the cave, I'm actually going to return to our base, drop off one of these solar panels, and request a resupply for a second free solar panel. So I will head on over there and get back to you guys once we're back at the base. Alright, and we're approaching our base just as the sun is going down. So since this mission requires solar panels to power the drill, we definitely can't do this mission at nighttime. So I'm going to go ahead and stash what I have right now, stash in this spare gear cupboard right here. And let's go ahead and call a resupply. I'll show you what that looks like. So here is the mission request resupply. Click this button. And down comes our spare solar panel, drill, and wiring tool. Take all this. Very nice. And this drop pad is probably going to damage my building a little bit. I'll have to get a little repairing in. We also have a wolf. There's the damage. I did more damage to the wall than the wolf did, I think, there. <laughs> Go ahead and repair that up. Uh, we got another wolf. So this is definitely why you want stone walls to protect your animals, because these animals are going to break down your wood walls like they're paper. So, definitely get yourself some stone walls as soon as you can, and then your animals will be safe and sound. No damage taken. We're doing good on food. Alright, so we have our spare gear. Now, if you really wanted to, um, you could continue to request even more resupplies. So you can technically get an infinite number of free solar panels from this mission. Um, usually, I think you have to quit back to the character select and then reload into the game before you can do an additional third, fourth, fifth resupply. Um, but for this case, I think just the two is going to be fine for me. I'm not sure how much longer we're going to be on Olympus here. So I'm just going to stash those two free solar panels. Um, for now, we're going to need at least one solar panel, one wiring tool, and one drill to complete the mission. Um, but for future reference, I suppose, we'll have all of that on hand. So I'm going to go ahead, cook up some of this meat, reorganize my inventory, um, get this cooking. 15 of those cooking. Um, and then I'll sleep and see you guys in the morning. Now one other thing I actually want to prepare for this mission in particular is the anti-poison potion. Which is going to require poison paste as well as the recipe for um, the anti-poison tonic. So let's go ahead and grab both of those. And the reason you want these for this mission in particular is you're going to be fighting a ton of cave worms. So we're going to have our hands full fighting cave worms. Make sure we take as little poison damage as possible. We'll make a few of these and make our life much easier for the mission. The reason it's a good idea to keep some rotten meat on hand is that's what's required to make the poison paste for your poison potions. So we'll go ahead and craft up 20 of these. It's going to take a few minutes, but we have time. I'm also going to craft up a hundred more flint arrows. We're probably going to need quite a few of them. And then I'll also grab my spare 
longbow, so I'll have two longbows, um, 188 arrows. I think that should be good. Worst case scenario, we can always come back to the base, but I think with that, our health tonics and our poison tonics, as well as our antibiotics, because we're going to be fighting inside of a cave, I think with all of that preparation, we should be good to go for this mission. So I'm going to get these poison pastes crafted into poison potions. We're going to craft up 12 of these poison potions. Um, we'll probably take a stack of 10 with us and have that on hand. We have some basic bandages, suture kits, health enhancement tonics, antibiotic tonics. I think we're pretty well prepared, as well as our longbow flint arrows. So I think we are good to go here. I'm going to go ahead and sleep. All right. So it is the next morning. It does take a few hours for the sun to fully rise. So uh, we can't even really complete this mission for a little bit anyways, until we can get our solar panel powered up by the sun. So I'm going to refresh my buffs here one more time. We'll grab our three poison tonics. I'm going to go ahead and wait for at least ten of these to craft up, do a little chores around the base, and move out once we're ready. Alright, so we have... 10 of these poison potions ready to go, 10 healing tonics as well as our antibiotics. I have my two bows in my inventory here, got my knife for backup, and I think we're ready to take on this mission. So let's head over there. Um, I don't think I'm going to bring my MOA because it'll be a little bit dangerous. I'm just going to leave them in the base for now and just head over on foot. So the sun is shining nice and bright. We're ready to power our solar panel and get this mission taken care of. It's gonna go around this mountain here and we'll be there in no time. So there is a bear over here as well. Let's be careful not to attract his attention. I guess I should be able to climb down this rock here safely. Let's keep on moving. All right, so we've made it to the cave entrance. We're going to need to make sure there are no bears watching us. And then set up our solar panel outside of the cave. So it looks like it's dark here, but I think we should be able to get the solar panel just set up right here. Maybe not. Maybe it needs to actually be in the sunlight. So we're going to move it over here, where the sun is shining, next to the cave. Okay, so the light is green, and this should be the cave that we're looking for, I believe. Let me just double check. Okay, yes, yeah, so we're gonna go down there. We're going to attach our drill to our power line. And once we do that, we're gonna have a bunch of cave worms on our hand. Okay, so we have our power all the way from the outside of the cave. We're gonna deploy our drill right here. And as soon as we hook this up, we're gonna have a fight on our hands. Okay, looks like that sucker's ready to go. Okay, so we do get poison there. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this. I'm going to retreat actually a little bit here. Oh, I'm getting nailed. Okay. We do have poison currently. 
fortunately we're able to one-shot these worms with our bow. My armor is also badly damaged. Hopefully it doesn't break. We just have a few more percentage points here and we're gonna be done. Okay, you cleared. Alright. Nice work. So that's the first cave here. We're gonna extend our power line into this next cave. Alright, and we're ready for the next drilling. I think what I want to do is repair my armor. So I'm going to need five fiber. I'm going to repair my armor just in case. And we're going to start this next fight. Alright, let's head on back. Might as well grab a few of the flint arrows from the worms that we killed here. No sense in wasting them. Alright. Let's go. So I think what I want to do is hook this up and then retreat back to the mouth of that cave. And use the mouth of the cave as cover. So let's go. Okay. Looks like that sucker's ready to go. So that hit me, apparently. Let me just drink my poison potion here. So it seems like the drill is actually active um, even when the worms aren't aggro. So I can effectively just stand outside of the combat zone and the drill will keep going. Any more takers? We're at 87%. Almost done here. Another one bites the dust. And there we go. Let's get out of here. For real this time. I'm just gonna get rid of that for now. And if I remember correctly, all we need to do is just set foot in the desert and this mission will be complete. for them. Excellent. And everyone else. Yep. Yeah, the future's coming. Where it's all going, who can say? I really I do love... Oh. Up to you. I really do love how the desert biomes look in this game. Uh, in my main save, when I started on sticks, I decided to start in the desert and I built a base out in the oasis out there and it is just when it's not sandstorming when it's not going crazy with the weather on you it is beautiful out there unfortunately on Prometheus there are no normal desert biomes there's a volcano biome a swamp and then a sort of grassy plains uh, but no big open sandy desert like that um, alright so I'm going to grab up my solar panel here and head on back to base so that was a decent chunk of experience not a huge amount but you know before we graduate completely from Icarus here I do want to complete a couple of operations and at least get um, at least get set up with a basic base here So as I was running back here, I realized that I hadn't spent my solo point. So 1000% I'm going with health monitor. This allows us to see animal health bars, which 
will help us spotting animals out in the wild so much more easily. And in addition to that, uh, I think I'm going to start working down towards this, but I am going to need the maximum level, so we're quite a while away from that. Um, we can turn wood into sticks in our inventory with that. But for now, let's just go ahead and work towards maybe Exotic Sprinter. That's another 10% movement speed if you have a single exotic in your inventory. So um, basically you're always going to want just one single exotic in your inventory and you're going to move 10% faster uh, with this perk maxed out. So I'm going to grab that, I think. I can't quite do this yet either okay so I'll put two points into dense packing it gives us some extra weight capacity and then we'll do this and then our next point we'll be able to start working on exotic sprinter as well um, so as you can see you know with that health monitor perk all the animals on the map are just instantly visible to us so it is an extremely powerful perk um, I would hundred percent recommend getting it it makes hunting missions so much easier it makes exploring and avoiding dangerous animals so much easier so in my opinion it's extremely vital if you're playing in multiplayer um, the multiplayer version of it is right here so you're gonna have to tech down into this one but if you're on solo all you need is this point right here and you can save your other tech points or save your other skill points rather um, and not have to get the health bars perk um, in the multiplayer tree. So with that taken care of, let's head back to base. Alright, home sweet home. I'm going to go ahead and stash all of our loot, our solar panel, and uh, drill here. I don't know if we're going to need the drill ever again, really, but might as well just keep it in there. Um, we'll cook up some of this meat as well. this going. I'll turn all of this into animal fat. We have quite a bit of it, but it's always useful to have on hand. And yeah, I'll do a little bit of reorganizing and be back with you guys in just a second. Alright, so the other thing we're a little bit short on right now is wood, so I'm going to chop down a bunch of trees and stockpile a little bit of wood now. All right, we got a ton of wood. Let's go ahead and stash this. And I think um, what I'm going to do next is maybe work on mining some more resources. And just gather some experience points from mining some iron, copper, whatever we can get, get our hands on. Um, the other thing that actually we can look into doing is crafting the orbital exchange interface. So that's a tier two item right here. So it's just a little bit of copper, iron, rope, and wood. Let's go ahead and grab this, craft that up, and place this one down outside as well. It's right here for now. And with this, we can actually look at our workshop. So before I drop into Prometheus, what are some things that we're going to want here? We could always go for some starter tools, but we can pretty much get up to iron tools pretty quickly now that we've leveled up. So I'm not sure I want to spend my Ren on this. What I think I really want is a set of armor. So this is going to be extremely expensive. It's 1,250 just to research. And then another 250. So 1,500 Ren to research and craft this entire set. So I'm not sure if that's totally viable. Um, you know, if we wanted to go back and repeat that first mission and grind up some more Ren, 
that's also an option. Um, but having that armor set for Prometheus is definitely going to help out significantly early on and make your life a lot easier in the harsh world of Prometheus. So I think maybe what we look into doing is maybe another operation. Um, none of these operations are available in open world. Split level survey, that's a radar quest if I remember correctly. Field test recovery. There are these encrypted signals which um, in order to access those missions you need to craft the encryption upgrades that you can see down here at the bottom. There's the infrasonic relay upgrade and the encrypted satellite upgrade. Those are, at least the satellite is a tier 4 item, so that's quite a ways away. We don't really have access to much in terms of missions. Um, what we could also think about doing is maybe doing this deep vein extraction mission in mission mode. So not in open world, but just as a mission. Um, and look into maybe getting some exotics that way. And with exotics, we can look into getting some more powerful modules as well. There's also additional suits that you can buy that require exotics. Um, but as far as just getting our feet off the ground, the main thing that I want to look into is armor. So we could get just the nano hel helmet, get that research and crafted with what we have right now, but... I think what we do is maybe work towards getting some more Ren, maybe through the operation system or missions system, and get this crafted up before we drop into Olympus. And the other option, of course, is selling exotics for Ren. Right now we have a few exotics. We have 26 exotics. So if we sold all of those, what would that get us? 26. That would be another 130 Ren. Still not nearly enough for the 1,500 that we need, but it's something we can think about. Uh, but anyways, as I was saying earlier, I think right now what I want to do is hop on our MOA and go on a little bit of a mining trip. So there are a couple of caves that we spotted um, as we were exploring earlier. There was one here, there was one here. Um, so I think this is the area that we head to. Let's see if we can snag up the resources from these two caves that are right next to each other. Let's see which of our MOAs is a little healthier. This one looks like he's ready to go. Let's hop on him. Before we go, let's harvest our crops as well. There's another perk in this game that you can get further down the line that prevents your crops from ever spoiling. But right now we don't have access to that, so I'm just going to have to stay on top of harvesting. Uh, but with that taken care of, let's grab these berries. Um, with that taken care of, let's head on our way. Alright, so we've arrived at the first of our two caves. This one, unfortunately, has a rock wall blocking it, so let's go ahead and tunnel through and get to work on the other side. Alright, we have our moa inside, take care of the worms. Oh, and just like that, we leveled up. Um, very nice, we're level 19. Let's go ahead and mine through some of these resources, and I'll be back with you guys in a little bit. Okay, so there's still a ton of iron remaining in this cave, as well as a little bit of titanium and, and platinum that we can't quite get yet. Um, if we grabbed our steel pick, we would be able to take the platinum at least, but for now, I just want to check out the other cave on the other side and see if maybe we get lucky and get some exotics over there. Fortunately, this one does not have a rock wall, so let's just hop right in here. And would you look at that? Some exotics. Okay, we got it poisoned, but we're fine. Um, 
This is awesome. We got exotics. Let's go ahead and snag all of these up. Another hundred or so ren if we decided to sell all of these. Excellent. So, yes, 28 from that one. All right. So I'm going to start mining up the rest of what we have in here. And once we're full, we're going to head on back. All right, so that's pretty much everything we can grab in this cave for now. There is a little bit more iron. And there's a ton more iron in that other cave as well, but for now, I think I'm going to head back, sleep through the night, and then think about what to do in the morning. Okay, we've made it back. Let's go ahead and park our Moa in his pen here. I'm nice and close to the food trough. And let's go stash all of this ores that, that we gathered. So we have a ton of iron, gold, coal, a little bit of copper. We have all of these exotics. And then all of that stone that we gathered from cracking through the face of that cave. Um, I also went back to that abandoned building from the previous quest and there was a drying rack in there just lying around so let's go ahead and just have this in the base as well if we need cured leather for example you can craft cured leather at this station so this is useful um, you can also craft cured leather here though if we didn't have the advanced textiles bench and only the regular one then the only real way to get cured leather is at the drying rack until you're level 20 and can get this item uh, but since we were so lucky and got this as a quest reward, we don't really need the drying rack, but might as well just have it in here for now. Um, but that being said, I think what I want to do next is maybe just start... Let's just grind a lot of these bones down into bone powder. Get some experience from crafting items here. We have a ton of bone powder to create. Let's do all of that. We're going to have a bunch of spare epoxies. We're going to be getting 22 experience for every one of those crafts. We do have some meat in here as well, I believe. Yes. Let's go ahead and take this. Um, let's just eat this, get it out of our inventory. We have a nice full stack of stringy meat. Um, I don't know if I've explained this, but the meats... The cooked gamey meat, stringy meat, and that T-bone steak are all considered the same class of meat, so prime meat. Um, you'll only get one food buff from any one of those three types, so stringy, gamey, and T-bone steak will only give you this buff. You can stack the small meat on top of that, and then another food like berries or some other cooked dish, but as far as cooked meat goes, um, gamey meat stringy meat and t-bones are all considered the same so you can't stack multiple of those on top of each other um, but yeah for now let's go ahead and sleep let some of those things craft up and once all of this bone powder is done we're going to make a ton of epoxies as well um, but until that's ready let's cook up a bunch more of this iron copper as well. Might as well stick that coal in there. Um, we'll hang on to a little bit of the ores. We have a ton of iron right now. That sound effect is extremely loud for some reason. Uh, maybe let's just do uh, 100 more ores and just leave it at that for now. We have more iron than we know what to do with at this point. Um, so we have 54 exotics. We sold all of that. 54 exotics would give us 270 ren plus our 338. Um, so that's 608. That'll be enough for two pieces of this armor set. Nowhere near enough for the whole thing. So maybe, as we're looking to polish off this last level, maybe let's look into some more simple quests. 
we had that hard down drone that would actually be a ton of experience points but it would also be very difficult um, and we have that simple hunt mission um, we have the storm coming in so maybe we wait that out before we think about doing any of those let's craft up all of this epoxy here with 75 more that's great we'll stick this poison paste in our bench over here um, so we also have another talent point so I'm gonna put one into exotic sprinter and what I'm gonna start doing from now on is always have just one exotics in my inventory and that's a permanent 5% movement speed buff and then once we max that out we're gonna have a 10% movement speed buff just for having this one exotics in our inventory let's repair our lantern repair some of our gear here while we wait the storm out all right so the storm is starting to die down a little bit and as I was waiting for the storm to pass I decided you know if we're going to oh okay I thought that was a wolf um, if we're going to be finishing up our time here on Olympus soon and maybe we just go out with a bang. Let's go ahead and do this down to drone quest. Um, we have only 600 in seconds. I did do a little preparation beforehand. Um, I have our stone ramps here. So we're going to set up some stone pillars. This is the down drone over here. We could use our MOA to go over there. Um, but unfortunately, it's going to be extremely dangerous with enemies consistently spawning over and over again. So, I'm just going to he head over to the down drone on foot. And once we get there, we're going to set up these pillars and use those pillars as a vantage point to stay out of the aggro range from the animals. There's going to be a ton of cave worms spawning. There's going to be a ton of cougars and maybe even bears, who knows, but I have both of my longbows on me. I have 170-something arrows. I think we should be able to do this with that setup. My only concern is um, if we can't kill the animals fast enough, they will destroy the drone. Um, so maybe something that you can also do is like build a little bit of a wall around the drone. Um, but for this, I think I'm just going to try it straight up. And worst case scenario, we fail the mission, but we should get a ton of experience from killing all of the wolves and maybe cougars and violent animals that s continuously attack it. So at the very least, it's going to be a good experience farm. And at the best, we're going to be able to complete this mission, get some Ren, and get another quest reward out of it as well. So, I'm going to head over there and get things set up. We're going to want these slanted beams ready to go. Um, we are at the drone right now. So, I'm going to set this up right here. Get that set up. Climb on top of it here. And let's get our inventory a little bit organized. Get these anti-poison potions here. Get my second bow here. Refresh our buffs. And I'm going to set up a second pillar as well. Maybe over here. As a backup. This one actually looks like it has a little bit of a better vantage point. Um, but this one is closer to the drone so that the enemies are going to be pretty much drawn straight to the drone. So I think the one closest to it is going to be most effective. Let's rearrange all of our stuff here. Um, maybe just like this. We're probably going to need those poison potions, but let's see how things go.
things are already starting off with some cave worms here. I don't think I can shoot him. That's really bad. Okay. Let's eat this. There's a jaguar. Um, I can't see the jaguar. <laughs> see his head. He's getting a lot of hits in. Okay, so there's our first Jaguar. Cave Worm. Oh my goodness. Jaguar is still roaming around there. He hasn't done any damage to our pillar quite yet. Um, my window is acting up on me. Wolf. Okay, the hardest part about this is not being able to see the animals. Okay, this Jaguar needs to go. To go. I'm taking damage. I can't see anything. The hardest part about this quest is simply not being able to see it. And there goes the drone. Well, that was a massive fail. <laughs> um, my window is all messed up. I think my recording is being affected by this. Let me just kill this jaguar. And, well, there was the level up, so we did get level 20. I guess that was the main purpose that we came over here for, was just to kill a bunch of things. Um, but yeah, level 20. Let me just check out my recording here for a second. Okay, so with that taken care of, let's just go ahead and skin up all these animals. Cave worms are still spawning for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> The drone is gone, buddy. Um, but let's gather up what we can. Head back to the base and check out all of the new Tier 3 tech that we can uh, now research. Alright. So yeah, I mean, we failed the quest, which is unfortunate. But in the process, we did get a ton of experience from killing all of those aggressive animals, so that is definitely a bonus, even if you're not really prepared to complete that mission. Um, I simply just couldn't do enough damage quickly enough. Uh, the biggest issue that I was running into was the smoke coming out of the drone was making it extremely hard to see where all the animals were. So, you know, this is a quest that I have completed before, but if you have a gun, <laughs> things are much, much simpler. Unfortunately, I don't have a gun quite yet. Um, but now that we're in Tier 3, Machining Bench is definitely something we're going to want. We can look into crafting a single-shot rifle, bolt-action rifle, even a single-shot shotgun. Those are always an option. Um, but yeah, I think for now, we just head back to the base with our tail between our legs and take a look at our new tech. Yeah, this is about how I feel right now. This is an accurate reflection of my mental state after that butt kicking we got from that quest. Alright. Don't look at me like that, guys. I'm sorry. I couldn't come home with the reward. Don't look at me like that. We'll get him next time. Um, but yeah, for now, let's get this meat going. Turn it into that. Maybe we cook up some of this just to have it on hand. Fill our stomachs after that defeat. And let's take a breather take a moment to check out all of our new tech. So there's so much 
that we can do now in tier three. Of course, the first thing we're going to want is the machining bench. Um, we're definitely going to want the cement mixer, the forge will give us access to platinum tools, concrete furnace, biofuel composter, and the biofuel can, which gives us access to deep vein mining. That's a huge step forward. We definitely are going to want that. So they reorganized the water as well. The water pipe tool is now a tier three item, as well as this biofuel water pump. And I do really like the metal rain reservoir compared to the normal rain reservoir. We'll maybe consider getting that. Um, let's just take a look a little bit further down. The infrasonic relay, um, that is something that's very valuable. You do actually get a free one of these uh, on Prometheus, so it's not entirely necessary to research right now. So we'll think we'll hold off on that for a second. Um, biofuel stove, kitchen bench, and those pills, that's also something that we definitely want. Advanced textiles bench, I would say, is something we definitely want as well. The smoker is also very nice. There is so much that we need and cannot quite get our hands on yet. So in order to mine titanium and aluminum, you need at least a platinum pick. So I do think that we're going to go forge and platinum pick. The platinum knife is also very nice. Um, if we're working towards biofuel drilling, we're going to need the copper, gold, and electronics here. That leaves us with two more points. We don't need the canteen or oxygen tank since we have our workshop items. I definitely want the rifle as well, but that's level 25, so we can hold off on getting the ammo for a little while. I think maybe the kitchen bench and biofuel stove, since that will give us access to a lot more in terms of cooking. The advanced textiles bench for when we move into Prometheus is going to be very valuable. All right, so I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and just get the advanced textiles bench so it's an option. And then I will also get the recurve bow. Mm. Man, I'm so conflicted. So we have the concrete furnace and cement mixer, which is everything we need for that. So we could start producing aluminum and steel. Um, oh, that was, <laughs> the other thing that I never did was get steel tools. Um, maybe we also get the steel pickaxe just to make our progression a little bit easier because we're going to need this for platinum ore. And then once we get, right, I'm not entirely sure if the steel pickaxe can take titanium. I don't remember. I think you need at least platinum in order to take titanium. So we're going to get the steel pickaxe and that way we can have a nice smooth progression up into Platinum Pickaxe, and then we can really start gaming. Um, but yeah, for now, that's it for the tech points. Let's take a look at our tree here. Um, so I am just going to put these extra two here. Or maybe one there for now, and then one here. And then our next level, we'll be able to get the Seasoned Logsman. And then for our solo points... I think I want to work toward Lone Wolf, so I'm just going to start progressing down the tree in this direction, and we'll get to Lone Wolf as soon as we can there. All right, and that, I think, is going to wrap up our brief time here on Olympus. Really, my goal was just to, you know, get warmed up, refamiliarize myself with some of the early game systems since it's been so long since I played on a character that wasn't level 60. Um, you know, and experience some of the simple missions. Simple missions were something that I didn't really do much of um, when I first played through the game. As you can probably tell, uh, I have done a few of them, um, but you know that was definitely a nice experience getting to do those simple missions, experience some of them for the first time, get some great rewards, great progress. And we have a really nice base set up here. I definitely feel a little conflicted about just 
leaving Olympus, but you know, the real mission, the real end game of Icarus at this point is Prometheus. You know, you get the red exotics there. The hardest biomes, the hardest progression. So now that we have our level 20 character, we're all set up for tier three. I think starting in the next episode, we say goodbye to our time here on Olympus and head over to Prometheus. Thank you all so much for watching and for the support you've been showing on this series of gameplay. I hope you're looking forward to the next one and for the next chapter when we kick off our journey on Prometheus. So thank you all so much for watching. Goodbye.